Number three, Robert Owens. In May 2016, 75-year-old Iris Owens lived in Carfilly, Wales. When Iris was 60, she got her first university degree. She went on to be a history lecturer and published a book. In May 2016, she was retired, but she was still very active in her community. She volunteered at several charities and worked at a local living history museum. She and her son, Robert, seemingly had a good relationship. Robert moved in with Iris 10 years earlier after he got divorced. Iris's husband, who was Robert's father, had died two years before Robert moved in. Robert had a history of drug abuse. In 2008, Robert was sentenced to six and a half years in prison for selling a Class A drug. Class A drugs include cocaine, ecstasy, heroin, LSD, magic mushrooms, and methamphetamines. It's unknown how much of the six and a half year sentence he served. On May 3, 2016, at about 5 p.m., a neighbor saw Iris hanging up laundry on an outdoor clothesline. Around the same time, the same neighbor heard a chainsaw. At 5.21 p.m., 47-year-old Robert Owens called 999, which is the United Kingdom's emergency line. He said there had been a terrible accident and he needed an ambulance. When the ambulance arrived, the paramedics found 75-year-old Iris lying on her back in the garden. She was bleeding from lacerations on her neck and head. She also had a black eye. She was taken away in an ambulance. 75-year-old Iris Owens was pronounced dead 20 minutes later. Robert was questioned. Robert told the police he had a heroin addiction and he last took drugs around midnight. A drug test was performed and heroin and cocaine were found in his system. Robert said he had been cutting wood pallets for the wood-burning stove. He said that his mother suddenly lost her temper and they argued. She then accidentally fell onto the chainsaw. But Iris's injuries did not match Robert's version of events. She had a black eye, so it appeared she had been punched in the face. She also had five broken ribs. The chainsaw made five separate wounds. Robert then confessed that he argued with his mother. She pushed him and he pushed her back. He punched her, strangled her, and kicked her in the ribs. He also cut her with the chainsaw. He was either unable or chose not to tell the police the sequence of the assault. He also did not explain what they argued about. Robert Owens pleaded guilty to murder. In November 2016, about five months after the murder, he was sentenced to life with the possibility of parole after 12 and a half years. The judge acknowledged that Robert had not planned on killing his mother. Instead, he snapped and killed her. He said that the attack must have been terrifying and incredibly painful for Iris. On July 15, 2019, less than three years after he was sentenced, 50-year-old Robert Owens died in prison. The cause of death was not made public. Number 2. Thomas Red McCluskey Pulaski is a small Tennessee city between St. Louis, Missouri and Nashville, Tennessee. In 1995, it was home to over 7,800 people, including 20-year-old Jason Bowen. Jason was a factory worker, but he wanted to join the Air Force. On March 12, 1995, Jason and his father, Bo, went to the home of his uncle, 39-year-old Thomas McCluskey, who went by Red. Red McCluskey was the brother of Bo's wife and Jason's mother, Helen Bowen. McCluskey had a history of mental illness and a criminal record. His mental health problems started when he was 17 years old. He was high on PCP, which is also known as angel dust, and he crashed his car. He developed a blood clot in his brain. Four years later, in 1977, 
he was arrested for the first time. He was charged with being drunk and disorderly. He had several brushes with the law that year. Later, in 1977, he was indicted for attempting to commit murder and carrying a dangerous weapon after he threatened the man who had been his lawyer. In 1984, he was convicted for being in possession of a sawed-off shotgun. He was given a year in prison and five years of probation. As part of his probation, he had to take his medication. In September 1992, McCluskey pulled a knife on Jason, who was just 17. There was an arrangement made that if he took his medication, he would not have to serve any jail time. Between 1977 and 1995, Red McCluskey had been arrested 14 times. Sometimes he was placed in a psychiatric hospital, but he would only stay for a few days. McCluskey didn't regularly take his medication. In 1994, McCluskey was diagnosed with schizophrenia. For years, McCluskey threatened his neighbors and family members with knives, axes, and guns. He also told them about times he killed cats and dogs. Helen Bowen always knew her brother was dangerous and thought it was only a matter of time before he killed someone. She had tried for years to get him hospitalized, but the law didn't allow mentally ill people to be held against their will. On March 13, 1995, Bowen Jason Bowen went to Red McCluskey's house to help him paint a room. When they arrived, they went to opposite sides of the house. 39-year-old McCluskey attacked Jason with a chainsaw. He cut him from his right shoulder to his back. Even though Jason had a gaping wound in his back, he took off running. McCluskey chased after him. Jason made it about half a city block before his uncle caught him. McCluskey then used the chainsaw to cut his neck and nearly decapitated Jason. Bo ran to a neighbor's home and had them call 911. After slaughtering his 20-year-old nephew, Red McCluskey walked back to his home. He was calm as if nothing had happened. The police arrived and arrested 39-year-old Red McCluskey. McCluskey initially did not cooperate with the investigators. Then the judge informed him he would not be forced to take his medication. He then admitted to killing 20-year-old Jason Bowen. He said that Jason owed him $5. It was determined that McCluskey was not competent to stand trial. In September 1996, the defense, the prosecution, and the judge agreed that McCluskey was not guilty by reason of insanity. He was confined to a psychiatric hospital where he would be periodically evaluated to see if he could be released. It's unknown what happened to Thomas Red McCluskey after he was committed to the hospital. If he's still alive at the time of this recording, he would be 69 years old. Number 1. Jose Corona April 26, 2010 started off as a normal day for postal worker Jeremiah Gonzalez. He was making his rounds in Louisville, Texas. Louisville is one of the mid-cities between Dallas and Fort Worth. In 2010, it had a population of about 95,000 people. Around 11.20 a.m., as Gonzalez was walking down the street, a man pointed at something on the road, and the man asked him, quote, what's that, unquote. Gonzalez realized that the man was pointing at a decapitated body. The head was beside the body. The body was still bleeding, indicating the victim had recently been killed. Gonzalez heard a chainsaw running. He saw that the chainsaw was on the tailgate of a pickup truck close to the body. There was blood on the chainsaw. Gonzalez then realized that the man who pointed out the body was gone. About four minutes after Gonzalez made the call to 911, a woman arrived on the scene and started screaming. It was the victim's daughter. She identified the victim as 44-year-old Maria Corona. Maria was the mother of six. 
Maria and her family lived in a house close to where her body was found. Her daughter rushed to the scene because her husband had received a call from her 49-year-old father, Jose Corona. Jose told his son-in-law that he killed his wife and he was dragging the body next door. The police arrived and they found two chainsaws on the tailgate of the pickup truck. One of them was running and they both still had blood on them. The pathologist determined that Maria was alive when she was decapitated. The police talked to Maria and Jose's friends and family. Just before Maria was murdered, she was on the phone with a friend. She heard Jose making a loud noise in the front yard with a chainsaw. She went outside and Jose attacked her with a chainsaw. The night before, Maria and Jose's son heard Jose running chainsaws at around midnight. The police believe he was doing this to make sure the chainsaws were in good working order for the murder the next day. Jose had no criminal record and the police had never been called to the family's home. Jose believed that Maria was cheating on him. He sought help from a curandera, which is a shaman or witch doctor. The curandera gave him bottles of perfumes and herbs to cast out bad spirits and bring in good ones. The police found vials of perfumes and herbs hidden throughout the house. They also found books on black magic. The police believe that the man who pointed out the body to Jeremiah Gonzalez was Jose. Jose then managed to slip away from the area before the police arrived. The police were able to track Jose's movements in the hours after the murder. First, he drove 20 miles south to Bedford, Texas. He went to a Walmart where he bought new clothes and changed into them. He ditched his car in the parking lot and someone in a Toyota pickup truck picked him up. The driver dropped Jose off at a car dealership. An employee permitted him to take a truck for a test drive. Jose drove to Laredo, Texas where he crossed the border into Mexico in the truck. That was the last known sighting of Jose Corona. It's been over 14 years since Maria Corona was murdered. Jose Corona is still wanted for the murder of his wife. If Jose is still alive at the time of this video, he is 63 years old. Thank you so much for watching today's video. We just want to remind you we started a channel membership where half the funds will go to solve a cold case. For more information, click on the video that's on the screen now. Well, that's all for today. Thanks again for watching.